The Kano Chronicle In the name of God, the merciful, the compassionate. May God bless the noble prophet. This is the history of the lords of this country called Kano. Barabushe, once its chief, was of the stock of Dala, a black man of great stature and might, a hunter who slew elephants with his stick and carried them on his head about nine miles. Dala was of unknown race, but came to this land and built a house on Dala Hill. There he lived, he and his wives. He had seven children, four boys and three girls, of whom the eldest was Garageje. This Garageje was the grandfather of Buzame, who was the father of Barbushe. Barbushe succeeded his forefathers in the knowledge of the lore of Dala, for he was skilled in the various pagan rites. By his wonders and sorceries, and the power he gained over his brethren, he became chief and lord over them. Among the lesser chiefs with him were Gunzago, whose house was at the foot of Gurundutse to the east. After him came Gagiwa, father of Rubu, who was so strong that he caught elephants with rope. There were also Gubanasu, Ibrahim, Badoje, Nisau, Kanfato, Doje, Barbushe, Janbere, Gamakura, Safatoro, Hangogo, Gatsangi. These were next to Barbushe in rank. Sanburo lived at Jigiria, and Jandamesa at Magum. The last named was the progenitor of the Rumawa. From Gogao to Salanta, the people traced their descent from Ruma, and were called Rumawa because they became a great people. Humbaro's house was at Tanagar. Gambarjado, who lived at Faniso, was the son of Nisau. All these and many more there were, pagans. From Toda to Dan Bakoshi, and from Doji to Dankwe, all the people flocked to Babushe on the two nights of Edi, for he was all-powerful at the sacrificial rites. Now the name of the place sacred to their god was Kakua. The god's name was Chanburai. It was a tree called Shamuz. The man who remained near this tree day and night was called Mei Chumbabarai. The tree was surrounded by a wall, and no man could come within it save Barbushe. Whoever else entered, he entered but to die. Barbushe never descended from Dala except on the two days of Edi. When the days drew near, the people came in from east and west and south and north, men and women alike. Some brought a black dog, some a black fowl, others a black he-goat. When they met together on the day of Jajibere, at the foot of Dala Hill at Eve. When darkness came, Babusha went forth from his house with his drummers. He cried aloud and said, Great father of Jimuna, we have come nigh to thy dwelling in supplication, Teheburburai. And the people said, Look on, Teheburburai, ye men of Kano, look toward Dala. Then Babusha descended, and people went with him to the god. And when they drew near, they sacrificed that which they had brought with them. Barbusha entered the sacred place, he alone, and said, I am the heir of Dala. Like it or no, follow me ye must, perforce. And all the people said, Dweller on the rock, Lord of Mamale, we follow thee perforce. Thus they spoke, and marched round the sacred place till the dawn, when they arose, naked as they were, and ate. Then would Barbushe come forth and tell them of all that would befall through the coming year, even concerning the stranger who should come to this land, whether good or ill. And he foretold how their dominion should be wrested from them, and their tree be cast down and burnt, and how this mosque should be built. A man shall come, said he, to this land with an army, and gain the mastery over us. They answered, why do you say this? It is an evil saying. Babusha held his peace. In sooth, said he, you will see him in the sacred place of Tehun Babare. If he comes not in your time, assuredly he will come in the time of your children. 
and will conquer all in this country, and forget you and yours, and exalt himself and his people for years to come. Then they were exceeding cast down. They knew well that he did not lie. So they believed him, and said, What can we do to avert this great calamity? He replied, There is no cure but resignation. They resigned themselves. But the people were still grieving over this loss of dominion at some distant time, when Bavuda, a generation later, came with his host to Kano. There is a dispute, however. Some deny this, and say that it was Bavuda's grandson who first reached Kano, and that he and his son died at Sheme. He, at all events, entered Kano territory first. When he came, he found none of Brabusha's men, save Janbere, Hambaro, Getsangi, Jandamisa, and Kanfatal. These said, Is this man he of whom Babusha told us? Janbere said, I swear by Tehububarai, if you allow this people within our land, verily they will rule you till you are of no account. The people refused to hearken to the words of Janbere, and allowed the strangers to enter the country, saying, where will Bagada find strength to conquer us? So Bagada and his host settled in Gazar Zawa and built houses there. After seven months they moved to Sheme. The district from Jakara to Damargu was called Gazar Zawa. From Jakara to Santalo was called Zadawa. From Santalo to Burku was called Fungui. From Banfei to Wase was called Zaura. From Wateri to the rock of Karia was called Dunduzuru, from Santolo to Shike, Shiria, from Damagu to Kazare, Sheme, from Burku to Kara, Gande, from Kara to Amnagu, Gija, from Karmasha to Ringim, Tokawa. Now the chiefs whom Bagoda found holding sway over this land acknowledged no supreme lord save Tehunbo Burai and the grove of Jakara. Jakara was called Kumin Bakin Rua, because its water was black, and it was surrounded by the grove. The pagans stood in awe of the terrors of their god and this grove, which stretched from Gorondumasa to Dalsara. The branches and limbs of its trees were still, save if trouble were coming on this land, it would shriek thrice, and smoke would issue forth in Tehububarai, which was in the midst of the water. Then they would bring a black dog and sacrifice it at the foot of Tehububere. They sacrificed a black he-goat in the grove. If the shrieks and smoke continued, the trouble would indeed reach them. But if they ceased, then the trouble was stayed. The name of the grove was Matsama, and the name of Tehububere was Randaya. The greatest of the chiefs of the country was Mazauda the grandfather of Sakin Makafi. Giji Giji was the blacksmith. Bugazau was the brewer. Hanburki doctored every sickness. Dunbuntania, the watchman of the town at night, was the progenitor of the Kurmawa. Soran Maje was Sakin Samri. And Jandodo was Sakin Makada Gundwa de Kuru. Beside these were Maguji, who begot the Maguzawa, and was the miner and smelter among them. Again there was Asani, the forefather of minstrels and chief of the dancers. Bakonyaki was the archer. Awar, grandfather of the Orawa, worked salt of Awar. He was Sarkin Rua of this whole country. In all there were eleven of these pagan chiefs, and each was head of a large clan. They were the original stock of Kano. 1. Bagada, son of Bawo. After Hegira 389 to 455, AD 999 to 1063. Then came Bagada with his host, and was the first Sarki of this land. His name was Daud. His mother's name was Kaunasu. He began by occupying Dirani for two years, thence he moved to Baka, and built a city called Talutawa, where he reigned two years. 
The names of the pagan chiefs whom Bhagavadam met were Jankare, Biju, Buduri, who had many children, about a hundred, and Rebo. Bhagavadam overcame them and killed their leader Jankare. Then he came to Sheme and found Gabusani, Bauni, Gazari, Dugege, Fasataro, and Bakinbunu there. He conquered them all and built a city and reigned at Sheme sixty-six years. 2. Warisi, son of Bhagavadam AH 455 to 488 AD 1063 to 1095 The second Sarki was Warisi, son of Bhagavadam. His mother's name was Saju. Those who were near him were Galadima Mele, Barawa Jimra, Buram, so called because he was the Sarki's son, Maidawaki Abdullahi, Sarkin Gija Karamayi, Maidala Zakar, Makuwu, Magai Iki, Gawarkuru, Maga Eki Gawarkura, Makama Gargi, Jarumai Goshin Wata, Jarmai Bakushi, Barde Duna, and Dawaki Surfan. These were the most important chiefs, but there were many more. Gawakura said, O Saki of this land, if you wish to govern it, east and west and south and north, keep close to Gazadzawa, since it is the key of the country and has not a strong god. When you come there, beguile the chiefs with gifts, and so rule them and their god. The Saki replied, No, I have not the strength, I am too old. Warisi ruled Kano thirty-three years. 3. Gijimasu, son of Warisi. After Hajira 488 to 528, AD 1095 to 1134. Gijimasu, son of Warisi, was the third Sarki. His mother's name was Yanas. When he came to power, he left Sheme and went to Gazazawa. Some, however, say that it was his son, Saraki, who came to this place and built a city. The latter is the better version. It was here he ruled, Mazara said. This Saki has come here in order to destroy our god and our grove of sacrifice. The people said, he has not power to destroy our god, in our time at least. So Gijimasu and his people built a house in Gazarzawa. He beguiled the elders with gifts till by his gifts he obtained dominion over them. They said, What a good man this is! How well he treats us! Mazuda said, I want to give my daughter to his son in marriage. But Bugazo prevented him carrying out his plan. The Sarki consulted the people about building a city. The people agreed. Come, they said, let us build, for we have the power and the strength. So they began to build the city. They began the wall from Raria. The Sarki slaughtered a hundred cattle on the first day of the work. They continued the work to the gate of Bazugar, and from there to the water gate, and on to the gate of Adama, and the gate of Gudan. Then passed the gates of Waika, Kansakali, and Kawungari, as far as the gate of Tuji. There were eight gates. Sakin Rano built a city called Zamnagaba, he began building from Rimin, Kira, and carried the wall through Wawan Toro, Tafusa, Kusarua, and Kadaba to the gate of Bay. He ruled all the country, as far as the lands of Sarkin Gano, Sarkin Dab, Sarkin Debbi, Sarkin Ringim, and Dan Bokonyaki. Santolo alone stood out against him, for its people were many and pagans. No one was able to rule over them. The Sarkis of Gano, Dab, and Debi came to Hausaland nine years before Bagada. But Buram, Isa, Baba, Kududufi, Akassan, and others of the Kano chiefs, men of the princely clan, came with Bagada. Gijimasu ruled forty years, then he died. 4. Nawata and Gawata. A.H. 528 to 530, A.D. 1134 to 1136. 
The rule of the twins Nawata and Gawata, children of Giji Masu, was the fourth reign. Their mother was Munsara. Together they ruled the city of Kano for seven months. Then one of them died, the other was left. The remaining one ruled one year and five months, and then he died. Altogether they ruled two years. 5. Yusa, or Tsaraki, son of Gijimasu, AH 530-590, AD 1136-1194. The fifth Saraki was Yusa, called Tsaraki. He was the son of Gijimasu. He it was who completed the walls of Kano, as is well known. He raided Koreye, and camped at Badari five months till the inhabitants submitted to him. From Gurmei to Farinrua, the people paid him tribute. Then he returned to his country. His mighty men of war were Tuje, Fasau, Iyagari, and Kamvaragi. All those had no fear in war. In Yusa's reign, shields, Garakwa, were first used. He reigned sixty years. The name of his mother was Yankuma, or Yankuna. He died. 6. Naguji, son of Tsaraki, AH 590-645, AD 1194-1247. The sixth Tsaraki was Naguji. His mother's name was Yankuma, or Muntaras. He was generous, but a man of violent passions. From Kura to Tsangaya, he ravaged the country and forced the people, willing or unwilling, to follow him. He camped at Basema two years for the purpose of attacking Santolo, but he was worsted in the war and returned to Kano. He found the pagans there on the verge of revolt, so he cajoled them with talk and executed their leader, Samagi, the son of Mazado, Dorini, son of Bugazao, Burtsa Ganguta, son of Tsoran Maje, and Buzuzu, son of Jandodo. When they were dead, the rest of the people said, we are willing to follow you, O Sarki, because we must. The Sarki said to them, If you are willing to follow me, show me the secrets of this god of yours. But they replied, We will not show you the secrets of our god. So the Sarki punished them. Noguji was the first Sarki who collected a land tax of one-eighth of the crop from all husbandmen. He ruled all the land of Kano save Santolo, which stood out against him. He ruled... 55 years. 7. Gugua, son of Gijimasu. 645 to 689, AD 1247 to 1290. Gugua was the seventh Saki. His mother's name was Munsada. He was a man of much tact and subtlety. He had a face remarkable for its expression. He was liberal, eloquent, wise, and magnanimous. All these qualities he turned to account in ruling the pagans and in discovering the mysteries of their god. They hated him. When he knew that they hated him, he said to his men, How shall I plan to get the better of these pagans and destroy their god? Ture and Galadina Bangare and Berde Kilma said, There can be no plan between them and us, nothing but war. We will conquer them and their god. When the pagans heard of this, they said in secret, When the ears hear, then is the body saved. The chief pagans assembled at dead of night, forty in number, at the foot of the sacred tree. Allah alone knows what took place there. They came forth when the sun rose and went to the Sarki. They said, O Sarki, when the night of Edi comes, we will tell you the mysteries of our God. He agreed, for he was glad at heart and gave them gifts abundantly. That night an apparition appeared to the Saki in his sleep, a man with a red snake in his hand. He struck the Saki with the snake, and said to him, Of two things choose one, either thou mayest know the mysteries, in which case thou wilt die, or thou mayest not know the mysteries, in which case thou wilt not die. The Saki said, No, no, no. Now when the Saraki rose from his sleep, he told his men what he had seen in the vision. They said to him, What do you see in it? He said, What do you see? 
They said, We see war. The Sarki said nothing. He spoke not a word. But suddenly he was struck blind. He remained blind for many years. He ruled Kano forty-four years. Twenty-two years he saw, and twenty-two he was blind. Then the power passed from him. 8. Shekaro, son of Tsaraki, 689 to 706, AD 1290 to 1307. The eighth Sarki was Shekaro. His mother's name was Alta. When he became Sarki, his men said to him, Sarkin Kano, what do you see in the talk of the people of this city? He said, I see nothing between us except things we can settle without fighting. They replied, If you try to make peace with the people, they will say that you are afraid. If they come to you and make smooth talk, turn away from them. Then you would not be acting wrongly. If matters do not fall out, thus we will fight them, and if we prevail over them, we will cut the throats of all their chief men and destroy their god. These counsels prevailed. All the pagans came to the Sarki with many presents and said, Sarki, and lord over us, we come to you to say to you one word. Do, do not take notice of what we have done, we pray you, but put away the slanderous counsel of your advisers. If the domains of a ruler are wide, he should be patient. If they are not so, he will not obtain possession of the whole country by impatience. The Sarki said to them, Your talk is true, and left them their customs and power. They said, Were it not for fear of what may result, we would have told the Sarki the secrets of our God. The chief of them, Samagi, said, If we show him the secrets of our God, we shall lose all our power, and we and our generation will be forgotten. So the dispute continued till the Sarki died. Shekaro was Sarki seventeen years. 9. Samia, son of Shekaro, 706-743, A.D. 1307-1343. The ninth Sarki was Samia, called Baran Damasu. His mother's name was Salmata. In his time, the cult of Tehibiri was first practiced. When he came to the throne, he assembled the pagans and said to them, Love transmits love, and hate transmits hate. There is nothing between us except bows and spears and swords and shields. There is no deceit and no deceiver except he who is afraid. Samia excelled all men in courage, dignity, impetuosity in war, vindictiveness, and strength. He had nine men who were equal to a thousand. The greatest was Madawaki Bajeri, and after him, Birdi Konkuru, Dan Kududufi Tanko, Dan Buran Bakaki, Jerume Garaji, Makama Gumki, Danunas Buriri, Sarkin Damargu Gabdodo, and Jekafada Masabi. When these men came to the battlefield with their Saki, they feared nothing, but were ever victorious. Now when the pagans of Kano heard the words of their Saki, fear seized their hearts. They assembled at the place of their god, and prayed to be shown who would gain the mastery, they or the Saki. It was foretold them that they would be overcome. They knew that their god would not lie. Their chief said, I see no means of deliverance from the Sarki, except we pay him money. His men said, We agree. So they were made to pay Jizia. They collected two hundred slaves within seven days and took them to the Sarki. The Sarki said, I do not want your slaves. So they returned home. Now on a certain Saturday the Sarki sent a messenger called Marukashi to them, saying to him, Tell them that on Thursday I am coming to Kagwa, if Allah so wills, that I may enter and see what is inside. I will destroy the wall and burn the tree. So the messenger went and told them. When they heard the word of the Sarki, they assembled on the Thursday at the place of their god, pagans of town and country alike, a crowd as has never been seen before. Of drums and cymbals there were a thousand and four hundred, and more than four hundred captains of spearmen. They marched round the place of their god from evening until the morning. When the morning broke, 
Sarkin Kano came forth from his house and went to the place of the god. In front of him were seventy men, each with a shield made of elephant's hide. When the Sarki came near to the place of the god, he prevented the pagans entering. As the fight waxed hot, the Sarki cried, Where is Bajeri? Bajeri heard the words of the Sarki and took a spear and rushed into the battle, cutting his way until he reached the wall of the sacred place. He entered, and seeing a man with his back against the tree holding a red snake, attacked him. The man leapt up and made a great shout. Fire breathed from his mouth until smoke filled the whole place round about. He rushed out, and in his attempt to flee, made for the water gate, followed by the Sarki, and plunged into the water. The Sarki and his followers stayed hunting for the man in the water, but he escaped and went to Dunkhoi, where they left him. Hence it is that if any warrior drinks the water of Dunkhoi, he does not prevail in battle. The Sarki returned to the tree and destroyed the wall together with all else connected with Tehibiri, which was beneath the tree. All the pagans had in the meantime fled, except Makara Dan Samagi and Dunguzu Dan Darini. The Sarki said to them, Why do you not run away? They said, Where were we to run to? Praise be to God, said the Sarki. Tell me the secret of your God. They told him. When he had heard, the Sarki said to Danguzu, I will make you Sarkin Tehibiri. He said to Makare, I will make you Sarkin Gazazawa. He said to Gamazo, I will make you Sarkin Kurmi. In the time of this Sarki, long horns were first used in Kano. The tune that they played was, Stand firm, Kano is your city. He reigned thirty-seven years. 10. Osumanu Zamnagawa, son of Shekaro. 743 to 750 AD 1343 to 1349. The tenth Sarki was Zamnagawa, called Osumanu. The name of his mother was Kumirku. He was called Zamnagawa because he killed Samia. He shut the doors of the palace and remained in his house for seven days. After that day, he went out. It is not known how Tsamia was made away with. Whether Zamnagawa ate him or buried him, no one knows. In the time of Zamnagawa, there was no war in the land, east and west, north and south. All was peace. The Maguzawa left the city and went to live in the country at Fungui. The Rumawa came in a body to the Sarki. They said to him, You are our Sarki. You have made a Sarkin Gazazawa and a chief of the Kurumawa Make us a chief also. The Sarki said, I hear. So they went back to their homes. The Sarki then took counsel with his men and said, I want to give my son the chieftainship of the Rumawa. And all his men said, We agree. So he gave his son the chieftainship of the Rumawa, whose town had become great and populous. Zamnagawa ruled seven years. 11. Yaji, son of Tsamiya, 750 to 787, A.D. 1349 to 1385. The 11th Sarki was Yaji, called Ali. His mother was Maganaku. He was called Yaji because he had a bad temper when he was a boy, and the name stuck to him. He drove the Serakine Rano from Zamnagaba, went to Rano, and reigned at Dunu two years. Then he removed to Kur together with the Ajawa and Wajawa and Aurawa. He stayed there. In Yaji's time, the Wungarawa came from Mele, bringing the Mohammedan religion. The name of their leader was Abdurrahman Zaite. Others were Yakubu, Mandawali, Fomori, Bilkasim, Kanaji, Dukere, Sheshe, Kebe, Murtuku, Liman Jibjin Yalabu, the father of Sirikin Pawa, Gurdumus, Alta, Lawal, Liman Madatai, and others, about forty in all. When they came, they commanded the Sarki to observe the times of prayer. He complied, and made Gurdumus his Liman, and Lawal his Muezin. Alta cut the throats of 
whatever flesh was eaten. Mandawali was Liman of all the Wangarawa and of the chief men of Kano. Zaite was their Alkali. The Sarki commanded every town in Kano country to observe the times of prayer. So they all did so. A mosque was built beneath the sacred tree facing east, and prayers were made at the five appointed times in it. The Sarkin Gazazara was opposed to prayer, and when the Muslims, after praying, had gone home, he would come with his men and defile the whole mosque and cover it with filth. Dunbugi was told off to patrol round the mosque with well-armed men from evening until morning. He kept up a constant halloo for all that the pagans tried to win him and his men over. Some of his men followed the pagans and went away, but he and the rest refused. The defilement continued till Sheshe said to Fomori, There is no cure for this but prayer. The people assented. They gathered together on a Tuesday in the mosque at the evening hour of prayer, and prayed against the pagans until sunrise. They only came away when the sun was well up, Allah received graciously the prayers addressed to him. The chief of the pagans was struck blind that day, and afterwards all the pagans who were present at the defilement, they and all their women. After this they were all afraid. Yaji turned the chief of the pagans out of his office and said to him, Be thou Sarki among the blind. In the days of Yaji, it is said, Sarkin Debbi, Sarkin Dab, and Sakin Gano brought horses to Kano, but this story is not worthy of credence. Yaji said to the Wangarawa, I want you to make prayer so that I may conquer the men of Santolo. For if I conquer Santolo, every town in the country will follow me, since Santolo is the key of the south. They said, We will pray for you, but we will not pray except beside the moat of Santolo itself. So the Saki set forth together with the Wangarawa, and they went to Santolo. He had with him a hundred and eleven men. Fifty of them were in front of the Wangarawa, and sixty in front of himself. The chief among his men were Jerume, Gavara, Dagga, Sama, Jakafada, Kuli, Raguma, Giwa, Makama, Butache, Maidawaki, Kawamna, Berdi, Sheggi, Saki, Zara, Kamati, Dan Buram Gantururu, Dal Makoo Dagazo, Galadima Tuntu, and Sarkin Suri Maguri. Others were Goji, Goroji, Tankarao, Karagagi, Karfasha, Kutunku Toro, Kampachi, Gorongiwa, the Galadima, Zaki, Bamboli, and others, altogether sixty. Now, when he came to Santolo, the Sarki camped near Duji. Duji was the name of a man. In the dead of night, the Wangarawa went to Santolo together with Yaji and marched round the city and prayed till daybreak. When the day broke, they returned to their camp. When the sun was up, they returned to Santolo eager for battle. The men of Santolo came out of the town and met them in the open. Fighting went on from morning until night. Neither side prevailed. The Kanawa retired to Duji. The men of Santulu returned to their homes. The Sakin Kano was very sore at heart. Fomori said, Do not be grieved. If Allah so wills, we will defeat them. The Saki was pleased with this talk. Kosa, the Saki's slave, said, My lord, I will tell you the secrets of the enemy. There are eight men inside the city, and no one can pass the moat unless he kills them. Fomori said, Do you know their names? He said, I know them. So Fomori said, What are their names? And Kosa replied, The name of the greatest is Hambari, and after him, Goshin Bauna, Katiwuta, Gurgura Karifi, Gandar Giwa, Hamburkin Toka, Zankata Kera, and Gumbar Wakke. Gorgi said, If I see Hambari, I will kill him, if Allah so wills. At sunrise, the Saki returned to the attack on Santola with black looks. He took a spear in his hand. Gorgi was in front of him, Zaita was on his right hand, Fomori on his left, and behind him was Sheshe. Behind them were the rest of the Wangarawa and Kanawa. 
When they came near to Santolo, all the pagans came out to battle. Gorgi saw Hambari and, girding up his loins, dashed into the fray. The pagans rushed at Gorgi, but he withstood them, and when they gave way, lunged at Hambari with his spear. Hambari caught him by the throat and dragged him from his horse, but in vain, for Gorgi drew his knife and ran him through, and so he died. Then Gorgi mounted his horse and entered Santolo, and all the Kanawa followed him and stormed the town. The Sarki commanded all the inhabitants to be killed, except women and little children. Gorgi entered the place of their god, with Kosa and Guragu, and found a bell and two horns, a battle-axe and leg-irons. Gorgi took the bell and the two horns. Kosa took the battle-axe, and Guragu the leg-irons. Yaji stayed seven days in the town and destroyed the place of sacrifice, and after dismantling its wall and tree, returned to Kano. He said to Gorgi, Choose whatever you want. Gorgi said, I only want to become Madawakin Kano. The Sarki said, I give you the office. Gasatoro, who was turned out of the post of Madawaki, built a house at Gawo, and for that reason was known as Madawakin Gawo, to distinguish the two. The next year the Sarki went to war with Waraji, and stayed there some time. At this time all the pagan tribes were subject to him, from Biri to Fanda. The Quora Rafa alone refused to follow him, so he went to their country. When he came to their town, they were afraid to fight, and all fled up the hill at Tagara. The Sarki camped there also for seven months. No one came down from the rock. At last the pagans paid him a hundred slaves. Because of this, the song in praise of Yaji was made, which runs, Yaji, conqueror of the rocky heights, scatterer of hosts, lord of the town. It is said that he died here at Kora Rafa. Perhaps he died at Kano. He ruled thirty-seven years. 12. Bugea, son of Tsamia. 787-792. A.D. 1385 to 1390. The twelfth Saki was Bugaya, called Muhammad. He had the same father and mother as Yaji. The name of his mother was Maganarku. The reason he was called Bugaya was as follows. After Zamnagawa killed Samia, he made overtures to his widow Maganarku, but she said, I am with child. So Zamnagawa gave her drugs without her knowledge to procure an abortion. In spite of this, however, she gave birth to a living child and gave him the name of Bugaya. It was this Sarki who ordered the Maguzawa to leave the rock of Fungui and scatter themselves through the country. He then gave all power into the hands of the Galadima and sought repose. The country was now peaceful, and regular tribute was paid to the Sarki. No one knew anything of his character even to the day of his death. He reigned five years. When he died, the Liman Matatai was ordered to pray over his body, and Lawal to wash it, and Turbana, Jigawa, and Kusuba to help him. They washed the body and put it in a shroud, and took it out to burial. The Liman prayed over the body. Bugaya was the first Sarkin Kano who was buried at Matatai. 13. Kanajeji, son of Yaji, 792 to 812, A.D. 1390 to 1410. The 13th Saki was Kanajeji. His father's name was Yaji. His mother's name was Aonaka. He was a Saki who engaged in many wars. He hardly lived in Kano at all, but scoured the country round and conquered the towns. He lived for some time near the rock of Gija. He sent to the Kororafa and asked why they did not pay him tribute. They gave him two hundred slaves. Then he returned to Kano and kept sending the Kororafa horses while they continued to send him slaves. Kana Jeje was the first Hausa Saraki to introduce Lifidi and iron helmets and coats of mail for battle. They were introduced because in the war at Umbatu the losses had been so heavy. 
He visited Kano and returned to Umbahu the next year, but he had no success in the war. He returned a second time to Kano, and again went out the following year. He again failed, but said, I will not return home, if Allah wills, until I conquer the enemy. He remained at Betu two years. The inhabitants, unable to till their fields, were at length starved out and had to give in to him. They gave him a thousand male and a thousand female slaves, their own children. They also gave him another two thousand slaves. Then peace was made. The Sarkin Kano said, No one shall again conquer Umbatu as I have conquered it, though he may gain spoil. In the following year, the Sarki made war on Zukzuk and sat down in Turunku. The men of Zukzuk came out and defeated the Kano host, saying, What is Kano? Kano is bush. The Sarkin Kano went back to Kano in a rage and said, What shall I do to conquer these men of Zukzuk? The Sarkin Tehibiri said, Re-establish the god that your father and grandfather destroyed. The Sarki said, True, but tell me what I am to do with it. The Sarkin Tehibiri said, Cut a branch from this tree. The Sarki cut off a branch. When it was cut, the Sarki found a red snake in the branch. He killed the snake and made two huifi with its skin. He then made four dundufa and ate kuntakuru from the branch. These objects he took to Dunkoy and threw them into the water and went home. After waiting forty days, he came back to the water and removed the objects to the house of Sakin Tehibiri. Sakin Tehibiri sewed the rest of the snake skin round the drums and said to Kana Jeje, Whatever you wish for in this world, do as our forefathers did of old. Kana Jeje said, Show me and I will do even as they did. The Sakin Tehibiri took off his robe and put on the hoofy of snake's skin and walked round the tree forty times, singing the song of Barbushe. Kanajeji did as Sakin Tehibiri did and walked round the tree forty times. The next year he set out to war with Zukzuk. He encamped at Gadaz. The Sakin Zukzuk came out and they fought. The men of Kano killed the Sakin Zukzuk. The Zukzuk men fled, scattered in ones and twos, and the chiefs of Zukzuk were killed. The Sarkin Kano entered Zukzuk and lived there close to the Shika eight months. The people gave him a vast amount of tribute. Because of this feat, the song of Kana Jeji was sung, which runs, Son of Kano, hurler of the Kere, Kana Jeji, drinker of the water of Shika, preventer of washing in the Kubani, Lord of the town, Lord of the land. Kanajeji returned to Kano. Among his great men of war were Berdi Gutu, Jerume Sabbo, Meidawaki Babaki, Makama Toro, Dun Buram Jatal, Jakafara Idiri, Jambori Sarkin Zora Bugal, Litidi Buzuzu, and Dun Akasan Gaderi. He reigned twenty years. 14. Umaru, son of Kanajeji. 812 to 824. AD 1410 to 1421. The fourteenth Sarki was Umaru. His mother's name was Yatara. He was a Malam, earnest in prayer. He was a pupil of Dan Gurdamas Ibrahimu and a friend of Abu Bakr. When he became Sarkin Kano, his friend upbraided and left him and went to Boru, where he remained eleven years. On his return to Kano, finding Umaru still Sarkin Kano, he said to him, O oh, Umaru, you still like the fickle dame who has played you false, with whom better reflection refuses to be troubled. In time you will be disgusted and get over your liking for her. Then regret will be futile even if you do regret. He preached to him about the next world and its pains and punishments. He reviled this world and everything in it. Umaru said, I accept your admonition. 
he called together all the Kanawa and said to them, This high estate is a trap for the erring. I wash my hands of it. Then he resigned and went away with his friend. He spent the rest of his life in regret for his actions while he had been Sarki. Hence he was called Dan Terko. He ruled twelve years. In his time there was no war and no robbery. The affairs of Kano were put into the hands of the Galadima. For this reason it was said of the Galadima Dana that he was the trusted guardian of the city, the dust heap of disputes. 15. Dauda, son of Kanajeji, 824 to 841. A.D. 1421 to 1438. The 15th Sarki was Dauda Bakon Damisa. His mother was Auta. In his time, Dagachi, a great prince, came from South Bornu with many men and malams. He brought with him horse drums and trumpets and flags and guns. When he came, he sat down at Bomfei. The Sarkin Kano went to see him. When he saw that he was indeed a great prince, he returned home and took counsel with his men and said, Where is this man to stay? The Galadima Baba said, If you let him settle elsewhere than in Kano town, he will soon be master of that part of the country. The Sarki said, Where can he stay here with his army? Kano is full of men, unless we increase the size of our town. The Galadima was sent to see Dagachi and returned with him, and built a house for him and his men at Duray. The Sarki said to his men, What shall I give him to please him and to make his heart glad? The Galadima Baba said, Give him whatever you wish. You are Sarki. You own everything. The Sarki said nothing. At that time he was about to start for war with Zarya, so he said to Dagachi, when I go to war, I will put all the affairs of Kano into your hands, city and country alike. So the Sarkin Kano went to war and left Dagachi in the town. Dagachi ruled the town for five months and became very wealthy. Then the Sarki returned. At this time, Zarya, under Queen Amina, conquered all the towns as far as Quararafa and Nupe. Every town paid tribute to her. The Sarkin Nupi sent forty eunuchs and ten thousand collars to her. She first had eunuchs and collars in Hausaland. In her time the whole of the products of the West were brought to Hausaland. Her conquests extended over thirty-four years. I will leave now the story of Amina and return to Sarkin Kano. Dauda Bakon Damisa ruled Kano seventeen years. 16. Abdullahi Burja, son of Kanajeji, 841 to 856, A.D. 1438 to 1452. The 16th Sarki was Abdullahi Burja. His mother's name was Tekidda. There was no one like him for generosity. He was the first in Hausaland to give Bornu Tsari, or Gaisawa. He opened roads from Bornu to Gwanja. He was the first to own camels in Hausaland. Sarkin Bornu left his country at this time and went to attack Asben, but as he could not find any water for his army, he returned home. The next year, every town in the west paid him Tsari. The Sarkin Kano went out to Hud and encamped there one year and six months. The Galadima Daudu went to wage war in the south. In Burja's time, Karmashi conquered the Migawa. The Sarki went to Dusi. The Galadima Daudu said to him, Return to Kano, I will do for you whatever you want done, and defeat your enemies. So the Sarkin Kano returned home. When he arrived in Kano, he found that Dagachi had assumed great power in the town, and collected wealth without end, and had built houses from his house as far as Salanta. It was Dagachi who made the market of Karabka. All this time the Galadima Daudu was in the south, making war on the pagans every day, conquering them and taking them as slaves. Every month he sent a thousand slaves to Sarkin Kano. All the people of Kano flocked to him. There was no one left in Kano except the Sarki and very old men. Every day 
Basarki sent to the Galadima horses, clothes, and horse trapping. The Galadima was sung as follows, Gatherer of the axes of the south, Gatherer of the youth of the south, Drum of wealth, Galadima, Drum of land, Galadima. He stayed seven years in the south. Slaves became very numerous in Kano. The Sarki sent to him to tell him to come back, so he returned. When he was returning, he stopped every three miles and built a town. He left at each a thousand slaves, five hundred males and five hundred females. He thus founded twenty-one towns before he came to Kano. On arriving there, he gave the Sarki three thousand slaves and said to him, I have founded twenty-one towns, and in each I have left a thousand slaves, all yours. The Sarki asked him, What are the names of the towns you have built? The Galadima said, Their names are Ibdabu. The Sarki said, I make you ruler of all these towns and their domains. Because of this, the Galadima was called Daudu, the strength of the city. The next year, the Sarki sent to Dusi to ask for a wife. He was the first Sarki who married a daughter of Sarkin Dusi, Sarkin Shira, and Sarkin Rano, and also a daughter of the Galadima. He ruled fifteen years. 17. Dakauta, son of Abdullahi Burja. 856. A.D. 1452. The seventeenth Sarki was Dakauta. He was dumb. The people said, If he becomes Sarki, he will be able to speak. When he had been made Sarki, and after one night did not speak, they turned him out again. 18. Atuma, son of Dakauta. 856. A.D. 1452. The eighteenth Sarki was Atuma, son of Dakauta. He was king for seven days only. He was turned out of the office of Sarki for fear of trouble with the Galadima Dauda. 19. Yakubu, son of Abdullahi Burja, 856 to 867, A.D. 1452 to 1463. The 19th Sarki was Yakubu, son of Tasafi. He was a good Sarki. In his time, Agulfati came to Kano. He was Sarkin Gaya and son of Sarkin Machina. Gaya came with his three brothers who became Sarkin Hedejia, Sarkin Dal, and Sarkin Gayam. The Sarkin Hedejia became Sarkin Gabbas and was given Hedejia. The Sarkin Gaya came to Kano and was given Gaya. The Sarkin Dal came to Kano and was given Dal. Sarkin Gayam went to Zarya and was given Gayam. In Yakubu's time, the Fulani came to Hausaland from Mele, bringing with them books on divinity and etymology. Formerly, our doctors had, in addition to the Quran, only the books of the law and the traditions. The Fulani passed by and went to Bornu, leaving a few men in Hausaland, together with some slaves and people who were tired of journeying. At this time, too, the Asbanawa came to Gobir, and salt became common in Hausaland. In the following year, merchants from Gwanja began coming to Katsina. Beriberi came in large numbers, and a colony of Arabs arrived. Some of the Arabs settled in Kano, and some in Katsina. There was no war in Hausaland in Yakubu's time. He sent ten horses to the Sarkin Nupe in order to buy eunuchs. The Sakin Nupi gave him twelve eunuchs. Yakubu ruled Kano eleven years. 20. Mohama Rimfa, son of Yakubu. 867 to 904. AD 1463 to 1499. The 20th Sarki was Mohamma, son of Yakubu, commonly called Rimfa. His mother's name was Fasima Berana. He was a good man, just and learned. He can have no equal in might, from the time of the founding of Kano until it shall end. In his time the sheriffs came to Kano. They were Abdu Rahman and his people. 
There is a story that the Prophet appeared to Abdurrahman in a dream and said to him, Get up and go west and establish Islam. Abdu Rahman got up and took a handful of the soil of Madina and put it in a cloth and brought it to Hausaland. Whenever he came to a town, he took a handful of the soil of the country and put it beside that of Medina. If they did not correspond, he passed that town. So he journeyed until he came to Kano. And when he compared the soil of Kano with Medina soil, they resembled one another and became as one soil. So he said, This is the country that I saw in my dreams. And he took up his abode at Panisau. Then he sent in to the Sarkin Kano. The Sarkin Kano Rimpa went out together with his men and escorted Abdu Rahman back to the city together with his men, of whom the chief were Hanatari, Gemindodo, Gadangami, Fakai, and others, ten in all. Abdu Rahman lived in Kano and established Islam. He brought with him many books. He ordered Rimfa to build a mosque for Friday and to cut down the sacred tree and build a minaret on the site. And when he had established the faith of Islam and learned men had grown numerous in Kano and all the country round had accepted the faith, Abdul Karimi returned to Massar, leaving Sidi Fari as his deputy to carry on his work. Rimfa was the author of twelve innovations in Kano. He built the Dakin Rimfa. The next year he extended the walls towards the Kofan Mata from the Kofan Degachi and continued the work to Kofan Getawasa and Kofan Kawaii and from the Kofan Naisa to the Kofan Kansakali. The next year he entered his house. He established the Kurumi market. He was the first Saki who used Dawakin Zaki in the war with Katsina. He was the first Saki who practiced Kame. He appointed Durman to go round the dwellings of the Indabawa and take every firstborn virgin for him. He was the first Saki to have a thousand wives. He began the custom of Kule. He began the Tara Takano. He was the first to have Kakaki and Figinni and ostrich feather sandals. It was in his reign that the Salam Idi was first celebrated in Kano at Shadakoko. He began the custom of giving to eunuchs the offices of state, among them Dan Kusuba, Dan Jigawa, Dan Tarbana, Sarkin Gabbas, Sarkin Tudu, Sarkin Rus, Maaji, Sarkin Bay, Sarkin Kofa. There were four eunuchs left without a title. He said to them, I make you chiefs of the treasury. The name of one was Turaki, another was Algira. The names of the other two were Al Soro and Kashe Kusa. The Galadima Dabuli built a house at Goda, and the Madawaki Badosa built a house at Hori. Chiroma Bugaya built a house at Debazaro. Surely there was no Sarki more powerful than Rimfa. He was sung as the Arab Sarki of wide sway. In his time occurred the first war with Katsina. It lasted eleven years without either side winning. He ruled thirty-seven years. 21. Abdullah, son of Mahama Rimfa, 904-914, to 914, AD 1499-1509, to 1509. The twenty-first Saki was Abdullahi. His mother's name was Awa. Her influence was very strong among the rulers of the day. She built the house at Dosei, hence its name, Gidan Madaki Awa. In his time, Ahmedu, who was afterwards Liman of Kano, arrived. Abdullahi conquered Katsina. He advanced as far as Katsina itself and encamped on the river near Tsagero. He remained four months at Tsagero and then went to Zukzuk and made war there. After conquering the men of Zarya, he went on to Kadora and to Kalam and made war on the inhabitants, after which he returned to Kano. On his arrival home, he found that Dagachi was preparing to revolt and that the Madaki Awa alone had prevented serious trouble as her influence was very great in Kano. This was the reason that Sarkin Bornu came to attack Kano and Kent 
at Gundwawa. The Sarkinkano went out to meet him together with his malams and humbled himself before him. The Sarkin Bornu went back to his country. As soon as he was gone, Abdul Hahi beguiled Dagachi into submission and then turned him out of his office and gave his own slave the title. He ruled Kano ten years. 22. Mahama Kisoki, son of Abdullahi, 914 to 972, AD 1509 to 1565. The 22nd Sarki was Mahama Kisoki. He was the son of Abdullahi and Lamis, who built a house at Bani Buki and established a market there, and was the mother of Dabkari Dan Iya. Kisoki put him in the Kanu 9, and for that purpose expelled Berdi. Kisoki was an energetic Sarki, warlike and masterful. He ruled over all Hausa land east and west and south and north. He waged war on Birnanunguru because of Agadam. When he entered the town, Sarkin Kano took his seat beneath the Kuka tree at the Kofan Fada, and assembling the inhabitants of the town at the Kofan Bay, reduced them to terrified submission. He gave orders that no men were to be made prisoners, but that only clothes and horses were to be taken. Then he left Nguru and lived for a month in the bush. The Sarkin Bornu sent to him and said, What do you mean by making war? Kisoki replied, I do not know, but the cause of war is the ordinance of Allah. The Sarkin Bornu said nothing more. The men of Kano returned to Kano. In the next year, the Sarkin Bornu came to attack Kano, but could not take the town and returned home. Then Kisoki said to one of his men, Dunki, Mount the wall and sing a song in praise of the Sarki and his men of war. Dunki went. The song that he sung was this, Kisoki, physic of Bornu, and the Chiritawa. He sung it again and again, and after that he praised all those who were present at the fight, as Galadima Bawa, May Dawakin May Sanda, May Dawakin Gawa Magani, Dan Kudu Dufi Kawamna, Makama Abdullahi, Makama Atuman, Dan Yerima Gajeran Damisa, Dan Buram Sagagi, Umoru Dan Maji, Dan Makoyo Jigu, Dan Goriba Jargarma, Dan Damen Koran, and Gaji Dan Bauni, and many others, about forty in all. Dunki sang their praises for forty days on top of the wall. After these he celebrated anyone else he thought worthy, as Madaki Koremma, Dagachi, Alkali Musagero, Sarkin Kaswa, Liman Kano, Sarkin Bay, Dan Maji, Sarkin Yara, the eunuchs, and San Turaki. The Madaki Awa, because she was grandmother of Abdullahi, was also celebrated in a song beginning, Mother, Kano is your country. Mother, Kano is your town. Old lady with the swaggering gait, old lady of royal blood, guarded by men-at-arms. Others there were too, thirty-four in all. In Kusoki's time, Shehu Tunis, who brought Ishifa to Hausa, came to Kano. Dan Gorunduma also came, and Shehu Abdu Salam, who brought with him the books, Madhuwanarana, Jam Esagir, and Samarkandi. In the next year, Tubi came from Zugzuk to learn from Shehu Tunis and became his chief disciple in Kano. Shehu Tunis told Kisoki to build a Friday mosque for the Rumawa. Kisoki built it. A certain Malam named Shehu Karaski and Magumi and Kabi came from Bornu. They were brothers. Kisoki took a liking to Shehu Karaski and asked him to become Alkali. He refused and suggested his brother Magumi. Magumi agreed and built a portico at the Kofan Fada. In Kisoki's time, Zaite, Tamma, Buduru, and Koda came to Kano. Kisoki ruled the town with his mother Iya Lamis and his grandmother Madaki Awa and Guli, the brother of Madaki Awa. Guli was much respected by the Sarki. He came to have power over the whole country. 
This is the reason every councillor is called Naguli. Kisoki ruled Kano 58 years. 23. Yakufu, son of Kisoki. 972-973 AD 1565 The 23rd Saki was Yakufu. His mother's name was Tunus. He was Saki Kano four months and twenty days. Guli deposed him. The Galadiman Kano Sara Katunia and Guli carried on civil war. There was forty days fighting in Kano before the Galadima overcame and killed Guli and determined to re-establish Yakufu on the throne. Yakufu refused, and returned among the learned men to study. So he went and lived in the country which bears the name of Yakufawa. He was the father of Mahama Shashere, Dauda Abasama, Sarkin Taura, Buduru, Sarkin Majia, Sarkin Gilima, Sarkin Kazura, and Sarkin Gunaka. 24. Dauda Abasama, son of Yakufu, 973 AD 1565. The 24th Sarki was Dauda Abasama. His mother's name was Zuhara. He ruled one month and twenty days before he was turned out. His brothers, Kazura, Majia, and his sister Buduru, so called because she was unmarried, Gilima, Taura, and Gunka, the youngest, joined him in his exile at a place called Karmashe. Dauda settled there, and a house was built for him. The brothers each chose a place to live. 25. Abu Bakr Kado, son of Rimfa, 973-980, AD 1565-1573. The 25th Saki was Abu Bakr Kado, son of Rimfa, and full brother of Abdullahi. His mother's name was Awa. In his time the men of Katsina worsted the men of Kano until they came to the very gates of Kano. They encamped at Salamta. The men of Kano went out to fight, but they were beaten and scattered and had to take refuge in the town. Devastation went on, and the country was denuded of people. The only place where anybody was found was in walled towns or rocks as Karayi, Guanguam, Masca, Tariwa, or any other rocky place. Abu Bakr Kada did nothing but religious offices. He disdained the duties of Sarki. He and all his chiefs spent their time in prayer. In his time, eunuchs and malams became very numerous. Kano was filled with people. Malam Sharif, Tama, Gesu, and Wuri came to Hausa from Lagoni. Some people say they came from Bagarmi. Tamma was the greatest of them. When they first came, they lived in Katsina land. For this reason, the place where they lived is called Tamma. Afterwards, they moved to Kano and settled at Gordia. The town was called Gordia after a certain woman, a harlot. She and the Sarki reigned jointly over the town. The Sarkin Gordia said to Tamma, Settle at Gordia. So Tama settled at Gordia and married Gordia. Abu Bakr was the first Sarki who read the book called Ashifa at the house of Dan Garanduma Kursia. He was the Sarki who made the princes learn the Quran. This he did because of his own sons. They read the Quran well, and the reading was in the middle of Sha'aban. Every morning after sunrise, the princes assembled. The Sarki came out after early morning prayer. He had seven sons, each of which read a seventh of the Quran. He gave his sons great wealth. The eldest of them was Abdullahi, otherwise called Dan Kado Kisoki. Chiroma Yan Sarki was another, then Dauda Tsaga, Dan Ashia, Ashia was the Sarki's sister, Dari and Tella. The Sarki built Goron Pugachi for the reading of the Quran. He began reading Jam As Sahir. He ruled Kano seven years and six months, and then was deposed. 26. Mohama Shoshere, son of Yakufu, 980-990, to 990, A.D. 1573 to 1582. The 26th Sarki was Mohama Shoshere, son of Yakufu. 
His mother's name was Fasuma. He was unmatched for generosity among the Sarkis of Kano. He was the first to give a eunuch the title of Wombe. The eunuch was called Damu. He also gave to a eunuch called Dabba the title of Sarking Dawaki. He gave to another eunuch called Mabayi the title of Dagachi. He determined on an expedition against Katsina. He said to the Alkali Mahama, the son of Tanko, the son of Jibril, the son of Mugimi, Find me an Alkali to take with me to war with Katsina. When I go to the war, I shall not return alive unless I beat the Katsinawa. The Alkali gave him his pupil Musa, whose mother's name was Gero. The Sarki made Musa Alkali. Now when he came to Katsina, the men of Katsina came out to fight. The armies met at Kankia and fought there. The Katsinawa won because they were superior in numbers. The Kanawa ran away, deserting their Sarki, with the exception of Sun Turaki Mania Nare, Sun Turaki Kuka Zuga, and Dan Dunki. Hence the songs Nare the Wall, ready to answer any challenge, and Zuga does not run away. These returned home together with their Sarki and entered Kano with him. The Sarki was very grieved. His men said to him, Lay aside your grief. Next year we will defeat the Katsinawa, if Allah wills. But meantime his brothers were treacherously planning to kill him. San Turaki Nare heard of their plans and told the Sarki, saying, Do not go outside your house, you or your Liman, today or you will be killed. So the Sarki remained in his house, while San Turaki acted as Sarki. When the conspirators came in the evening, they found San Turaki with his slaves in the mosque, and, thinking he was the Sarki, attacked him. He had with him nine of his own slaves, and eighteen of the Sarki's household. The nine slaves were killed. Twelve of the others were killed, and six captured. The names of the six were Burima, Jigo, Adam, Wukaka, Tukuki, and Sarkin Wawaii. The new Sarki Mahama Zaki intended to kill these six, but they prayed and begged him, saying, Spare us, and we will be your slaves. We are your grandchildren. So the Sarki spared them, but each of them chose a task as the price of their lives. San Turaki Nare was buried in the mosque in which he was killed. For this reason, Mahama Zaki made Aderki build Sirikin Jarme a house inside the Sarki's compound. The Zaure of Turaki Mania was also built near the mosque, as also Yan Sintali's house, and the houses of Turaki Kuka and Mei Shikashikai. The site of the mosque was changed. On account of this occurrence, Turaki Mania had the honor of acting for the Sarki, if he were absent, in the time of Mahama Zaki, but afterwards the rite lapsed. Shoshere ruled nine years and four months and twenty-four days. Then he was deposed. 27. Mahama Zaki, son of Kisohi, 990 to 1027. A.D. 1582 to 1618. The 27th Sarki was Mahama Zaki, son of Kisohi. The name of his mother was Hausatu, the daughter of Tamma. When Mahama became Sarki, Tamma came to live at Kano together with his men, the Kakikawa. In the time of Mahama Zaki, Tehukana, and Dirki were begun. The Sarki's men kept saying to him, Sarkin Kano, if you leave the Katsinawa alone, they will become masters of all Kano, and you will have nothing to rule but a little. The Sarki said, I will conquer the Katsinawa if Allah wills. At this time, the Sarkin Kororafa came to attack Kano. The people of Kano left the city and went to Dara, with the result that the Kororafawa ate up the whole country, and Kano became very weak. The men of Katsina kept on harrying Kano. If it had not been for the sake of the Malams in Kano, they would have entered and destroyed the city. There was a great famine which lasted eleven years. The Sarki called all his men and Malams together and said, I have called you together to take counsel with me. How are we to stay this calamity? Shahu Abu Bakr, the Maghrebin, said, 
If you wish to repel the men of Katsina, I will give you something to do it with. But if you do repel them, you will never return to Kano. The Sarki agreed. He gave Shehu great wealth and the Malams many gifts. Shehu did as he promised to do. The Sarki left Kano on the twenty-second day of Ramadan and arrived beneath the walls of Katsina at daybreak on the day of the Salah. The men of Katsina came out to battle before the hour of the feast. The battle took place at Guraji. The men of Kano defeated the men of Katsina. The men of Katsina dispersed and fled, and the Kanawa took much spoil. They took four hundred horses and sixty suits of horse armor. No one knows the amount of the spoil or the number of the slain. The Sarki returned to Karai, where he died. His captains in war were eight in number. Madawaki Shaduka, Makama Baba, Jarunai Kayoto, Atumau, Yanka Shada, Burdi Hako, Domaki Marku, and Butali. He ruled Kano thirty-seven years and five months. 28. Mahama Nazaki, son of Zaki. 1027 to 1032. A.D. 1618 to 1623. The 28th Saki was Mahama Nazaki. His mother's name was Kursu. When he became Saki, he sent messengers to make peace with Katsina. Sarkin Katsina refused his terms and invaded Kano. The Kanawa came out, and a battle took place at Karai, in which the Kanawa defeated the Katsinawa. Then they returned to Kano. Next year, the Sarkin Kano went to Kalam. He left the Wombe Giwa behind at Kano because he was sick. When the Wombe recovered, he said, What can I do to please the Sarki? His men said, Add to the city. He said, Very well. So he built a wall from the Kofan Dogo to the Kofan Gadonkaya, and from the Kofan de Kawuya to the Kofan Kabuga, and to the Kofan Kansakali. He spent an enormous amount of money on this improvement. Every morning he brought a thousand calabashes of food and fifty oxen for the workmen till the work was finished. Every man in Kano went to work. No man surpassed the Wombe in benevolence to Muslims and the poor. The day when the work was to be finished, the Wombe Giwa distributed among the workmen a thousand tobes. He slaughtered three hundred cows at the Kofans Kansakali and gave the Malams many presents. When the Sarkin Kano returned from war, the Wombe gave him a hundred riding horses. Each horse had a mail coat. The Sarki was very pleased. He said, What shall I do for this man to make his heart glad? His men said, Give him a town. So the Sarki gave him Karai, hence the song, Elephant Lord of the Town, Abdullah, foe of the bull hippopotamus, whose chains for taking captive women are hoes and axes. The Wombe left Kano and went to Karai. Every day he fought the Katsinawa and took much spoil from them in war. He became master of a hundred mailed horsemen and a thousand horses. He was sung as the elephant who reduces his neighbors to servitude. He became so mighty that it was feared he would revolt. Hence he was turned out of his office in the time of Kutumbi. Muhammad Nazaki ruled Kano five years and one month. 29. Kutumbi, son of Muhammad Nazaki, 1032 to 1058, A.D. 1623 to 1648. The 29th Sarki was Kutumbi, the son of Muhammad Nazaki, otherwise called Muhammad al-Wali. His mother's name was Dada. He was a great Sarki. He had a friend whose name was Kalina Atuman, to whom he entrusted great power. No one would believe the extent of his power except one who saw it. He ruled over Kano town and country until his power equaled that of the Sarki, while the Sarki was like his wazir. This Kalina Atuman was in power for twelve years. Then he died. After his death, one of his men, Dawaki Koshi, came to the front. He too became so powerful that he seemed likely to revolt. 
he went to a place called Bakin Kari and was there for seven days. After this, he went to Yan Kwasa, where he remained three days, and afterwards to Rimin Kwashi, the Sarki's farm. All the chief men of the town flocked to his standard. He had been there nine days when the Sarki induced him to come back with fine words. Then he returned to Kano. He was celebrated in the song, See your prophet, ye princes. You looked for a black dog and did not find it at the hearthstones. Dewaki can put to flight a host with a shield of lotus. Dewaki, the son of the great Dayi, the boaster. Dewaki was the son of Turaki Kuka Alandayi. Thus it is that if the Sarki is sung, no one may be mentioned but him. During the time of Kutumbi, the saying, O God, great and loving, the great man hath the spleen, originated because of Alandayi's anger when the Umwa Kofan Kabagga was taken from him. No man of that time in Kano had accumulated such vast wealth and so many eunuchs and ornaments. Hence he was sung in the song, Great God, Light of the Town, O Star. Kutumbi was the father of Bako. No prince could compare with him. In everything, in doing good or doing ill, in courage, anger, and generosity, he was like a Sarki, even while he was only a prince. He had six hundred horses and ninety mailed horsemen. He went to Kurmin Dan Ranko to war and took much spoil. When he returned to Kana, he was given the title of Jarume for this exploit. Afterwards, he prayed to die and died for fear of civil war after his father's death. In the time of Kutumbi, Sarkin Dawaki Magara went to war with Bauchi, and on his return built a town at Ganjua and settled there. He sent to Kano two thousand slaves. Kutumbi was very angry about this. Next year he mounted his horse and went off to war there. The people paid him jizya. Then he returned to Kano leaving there five hundred slaves. The place was called Ibdabu, since the people were all the slaves of the Sarki. The next year, Kutumbi went to war with Katsina. He was victorious and took much spoil. He camped at Dugazawa for nine months, during which time no one could venture out of Katsina. From this siege comes the song, Alwali, Shutter of the Great Gate, Kimbirmi, Shutter of the Great Gate. Of Kutumbi's warriors, the greatest was Madawaki Kimbirni, then came Makama Banki, Dan Maji Jataki, Jamei Garaje, Berdi Kamoku, Goriba Babba, Dan Kanfachi Zabarao, Dan Ataman Babaki, Guoto, Kaderko, Dawaki Sun Kuche, and Dan Mokoo Makere so called because he always fought with a kere. There were others beside, and they feared nothing but God. Kutumbi returned to Kano, and the next year went to fight with Gwombi, which he sacked. He was the first Sarki of Kano who collected the jizya from the Fulani, which is called Jangali. He collected a hundred cows from the Jafunawa, the chief clan of Fulani, seventy from the Bawa, sixty from Dindi Maji, fifty from the Danneji, and others too numerous to mention. When he had collected the cattle, he said to his slave Ibo, I make you Sarkin Shano. Hence the latter was called Ibo na Kutumbi. He said to Mandawali, You are Sarkin Samri, because you have charge of all the youths among my slaves. He called the slaves Kirdua. He said to Gumki, I make you Sarkin Dugari. He said to Buwayi, You are Sarkin Shamaki. This man was called Buwayi because he was a black sheep. His name was Agurmaji. Kutumbi turned the Sarkin Serdi out of his house and told him he had appointed another to his office. Sarkin Serdi built a house for himself. Whenever Kutumbi went to war or to Sala, he was followed by a hundred spare horses. Forty drums were in front of him, and twenty-five trumpets, and fifty kettle drums. He was the first Sarki to create a Berde Kereria. 
he was always followed by a hundred eunuchs, who were handsomely dressed and had gold and silver ornaments. He built a house at Gandu, and another at Tokarawa. In the latter he lived when he went to war, and waited there until his army had assembled before setting out. When he returned from war, he encamped at Gandu, where he would spend the night. Kutumbi was a very mighty Sarki in Hausaland. He went to war with Katsina, and encamped close to the western gate of the city. The Katsinawa came out at night, and a battle took place before daybreak. The Katsina army surprised the Kanawa. The whole of the Kanawa ran away. A man called Kumaza poised his spear and smote at Kutumbi. But Danmaji Zartaki rushed in and killed him. Hence the song, Rafter of Iron, Stronger Than Seri Wood. Sarkin Kano mounted his horse and retreated, together with the few men who were with him. The men of Katsina pursued the retreating Kanawa and harried them until they reached Yashi. As regards Sarkin Kano, some people say he was killed in Katsina. Others say that he died at Kano. The latter is the better account. In any case, he died within three days of the battle. He ruled Kano twenty-six years. 30. Al-Haji, son of Kutumbi, 1058 to 1059, A.D. 1648 to 1649. The 30th Sarki was Al-Haji Dan Kutumbi. His mother's name was Fadima. He ruled Kano eight months and twenty-four days. Then he was deposed. The reason I do not remember. He went into the country to live at a place called Danzaki. 31. Shekkarbal, son of Al-Haji. 1059-1061 A.D. 1649-1651 The 31st Sarki was Shekkarbal, the son of Al-Haji and Fari. In his time, peace was made between Kana and Katsina. The peacemakers were Shehu Ataman, Malam Bawa, and Liman Yandoya. Shehu Ataman said, In future, whoever is the aggressor between you shall never prevail, if Allah wills, till the day of judgment. About this time, Dan Tama Maji went out with Sarkin Gesu Sulimanu to Gadir. Shekkara ruled one year and seven months and twenty-four days. 32. Kukuna, son of Al-Haji, 1061-1062, A.D. 1651-1652. The 32nd Sarki was Mahama Kukuna. His mother's name was Goro. After he became Sarki, he ruled one year. The Madawaki Kuma turned him out and gave the power to his sister Fasuma's son, Soyaki. 33. Soyaki, son of Shikaro, 1062, A.D. 1652. Soyaki was the 34th Sarki. His mother was Fasuma. Kukuna fled to Zukzuk. Soyaki had been reigning three months when the chiefs of Kano met together and held a consultation about him. The chief of them were the Galadima Wari, the grandfather of Kofakani Dan Iya Baba, Makama Mukhtari, and Sarkin Dawaki Gagori. They sent messengers secretly to Mahama Kukuna, who at once set out for Gaya. The Sarkin Gaya joined him in his march to Kano. The Madawakin Kano heard of this, assembled the men of Kano, and told them the news. They said, We hear. He said, What do you propose? They said, Shall we not go out before they get close to the city? The Madawaki said, Very well. A battle took place at Hotoro. The Kano men ran away and deserted the Madawaki Kuma. Kukuna attacked him with a spear. He feared to be killed and tried to escape. Kukuna followed him. The Madawaki made for the Kofan Kawaii and shouted to the people to close the gate behind him so that Mahama Kukuna should not enter. Kukuna, however, got in before the gate was shut and reached the palace. He found the Saki Soyaki at the Gidan Ma Shikashikai 
together with his eunuchs. So he seized the sword from the hand of Siaki and cried, Allahu Akbar, you Sarki of a day, go out. If you do not go, I will cut your head off. The Sarki went out. A house was built for him at Dukarawa, where he lived and died. 34. Mahama Kukuna, restored. 1062 to 1070. A.D. 1652 to 1660. Mahama Kukuna then entered the Gidan Rumfa and lived 60 days there. After this, he arrested the Marawaki Kano. Then he assembled many maidens, put the Marawaki on a donkey, and handed it over to the maidens to drive round the town. They did as he commanded. The Marawaki died of chagrin. Kukuna drove away Fusuma the wife of Shikaro, and mother of Siaki, because of the grudge he bore her son. She built a house at Duruminyer Matawaki. Next year, Sarkin Kororafa Adashu came to attack Kano. Sarki Kano went to Yan Magada, where he stayed seven days, and then to Aoyo and Abewa, where he remained forty days. On his return to Kano, he found that the Kororafa had battered down the Kofan Kawaii. He waited seven days, then marched round the city on a Saturday, entered his house, and stayed there two days. On a Monday, he went to the Kofan Kawaii and built it up. From the first of these episodes, he was called Gewaiir Garu. From the second, Nachin Kasa. On the same Monday, he called all the Marguzawa to the city to salute him. They remained twenty-one days, and played a game in which they beat each other's heads with iron. The Sarki gave them many gifts, and asked them who was their chief. On their saying it was Zanku, the Sarki said to him, Next year come again, and let all your men come with their hauiers on their shoulders. If you do so, Zanku, said Kukana, God willing, no Sarkin Kana will be driven out again. Afterwards he sent for the Liman Yandoya, and after giving him many presents, said, I want you to give me a charm which will prevent any Sarki from being again driven out of Kano. The Liman said, Very well, but you must increase your presents. Kukuna did so, and gave him silver and gold. The Liman gave him what he gave him. The Liman told Kukuna to bury one charm in the Turaki Mania's house, another in the house of Turakin Kuka, and another in the treasury of Kano, and he further added that a fire must be kept burning every day above the charms, and assured the Sarki that if his instructions were carried out, no Sarki would ever again be deposed. Kukuna did so, and ruled eight years and seven months, in addition to the year that is mentioned above. Then he was deposed. 35. Bawa, son of Mahama Kukuna, 1070 to 1081, A.D. 1660 to 1670. The 35th Sarki was Bawa. His mother's name was Lamis. He was a learned, just, and good Sarki. In his time there was no war in Kano land, east and west, south and north. Goron Pugachi, which Abu Bak Kado, the son of Mahama Rimfa, had built for his sons, had fallen into ruins, so Bawa repaired it. Bawa fashioned the chair which is placed in the house of the great Turaki, that he might sit on it. He built Pugachin Kishi as a school. He had a friend who was called Dan Malam Ali Diko. This Diko received such honour that a house for him was built in the palace called Soron Diko, in such honor was he held. He and the Sarki were inseparable. They rode together even at the Sala or elsewhere, since they had been the closest of friends from the time before Bawa had become Sarki. They had studied together. Diko always said his morning prayers at the Sarki's house, and never returned home until after the evening prayer. In Bawa's time, Abdullahi, a great student of the Quran, came to Kano with his friends. He had a wonderfully captivating voice when reading. He took a house near Diko's and preached after evening prayer. Diko asked, 
Who is that man? And was told it was Abdullahi, a stranger. The next morning, Diko went to Abdullahi, and when he came, took him to the Sarki and told him to read to the Sarki. So he read the appointed portion of the Quran. After the Sarki had listened, he would not let him go away, but built him a house near to the gate of Turaki Mania. He was wont to amuse the Sarki at night by reading. During Ramadan, Abdullahi preached to the Sarki during the vigils. When Dan Luan died, the Sarki said to Abdullahi, I make you Dan Luan, and you will call to prayer. In Bawa's time there were many holy men. He ruled Kano ten years, four months, and twenty days. 36. Dadi, son of Bawa, 1081-1114, A.D. 1670-1703. The 36th Sarki was Dadi. His mother's name was Ka Iyagari. He wished to enlarge the city of Kano, but Shekhul Muhammad prevented him. The next year, Sarkin Khorarafa came to fight with Kano. The Sarki wished to go out and fight him outside, but the chiefs of Kano demurred, and he remained in his house. The Khorarafa entered Kano by the Kofan Gadon Kane, slaughtered the men of Kano, and reached Bakinroa. The Galadima Kofakani said to the Sarkin Kano, who was in the Pugachin Kishi with his Jarumai, Establish Tehibiri at Toji and Bundu at Rimi Bundu. The Galadima said to the Sarki, Rise up! The Quararafai have destroyed the best part of your town and have killed many men. They have penetrated to the Kurmi and will attack the palace. The Sarki mounted his horse and went out and came to the Kofan Fada with the Galadima and eunuchs and Jarumai. There he met all the Kanawa. He went to Rimin Bundu, took the Bundu, and gave it to Dan Durma Mazza Mazza, and thence hastened to Kofa Bay. He found the Kora Rafa had come near the Tehibiri, but every one of them who came close died at once. The Sarkin Kora Rafa told his people to take away the Tehibiri, the Quararafai tried to charge, but they failed to seize it. The Sarki Kano came to the Tehibiri and took it. On his right hand he had a hundred warriors, in front of him ninety-nine chiefs, all of them Malams, and on his left hand a hundred warriors. They were all slaughtered by the Quararafai. Only a few were left alive. Sarkin Kano fled to Dara. The Quararafai followed him to Jelly and then returned. Of the men who were killed in this battle, the chief were Dan Janbori, Dan Barra, Sarkin Buzza, Sarkin Dura, Dan Tanadi, Bundu, Sarkin Zabro, Magadi Bugaji, Sarkin Marua, Dan Garadu, Dan Raguma Giwa, Magaji Butachi, Dan Kawamna, Magagi Shegdi, Dan Gamaji, Magaji Gantururu, Dan Dagazo, Magagi Tuntu, Sarkin Maguri, Dan Ganji, Magagi Garogi, Dan Tankara, Dan Kargagi, Magagi Karfasa, Dan Kantantu, Dan Toro, Dan Zaki Mazawa, Dan Bambori Koyato, and others, in all 97 Sarkis. In the time of Dadi, the Sarkin Gaya revolted. His name was Farin Dusi, the father of Mariamma. He was three years without paying the Sarkin Kano Jizia. Then the Sarkin Kano enticed him to an interview and killed him, some say with a razor, some at Barra. In consequence of this revolt, Sarkin Dawaki Debba, called Kamna, went out and became Sarkin Aljura. The Sarki said to him, I am making you Sarkin Aljura because I am afraid of Miga, Dusi, and Gaya revolting. Dadi ruled Kano thirty-three years and eight months. 37. Mahama Sharifa, son of Dadi, 1114 to 1143, A.D. 1703 to 1731. The 37th Sarki was Mahama Sharifa, son of Dadi, his mother's name was Mariamma. 
She was the daughter of Sir King Gaia Farin Dusksi. In Sharifa's time, the men of Gayu became very influential in Kano. Sharifa was a powerful Sarki. He introduced seven practices in Kano, all of which were robbery, namely Karo, Rinswa, Matafada, Yandawaki, Kuwaru, Jizia of Maidens on Marriage, and Jizian Kaswa Kurmi. He invented many other methods of extortion. Sharifa sent Wombay Debba to war. The Wombay left Kano for Kiru, and making war on it, captured much spoil and many men. News came to Sharifa that the Wombay had sacked Kiru, and that there was nothing in the town but ashes. Sharifa said nothing, but when the Wombay Debba returned to Kano, asked him what he meant by such work. The Wombay said, I like Kano, speaking in riddles. In Sharifa's time, the Sarkin Jamfara, Yakubu Dan Mazura, came to make war on Kano. A battle was fought at Yirgana in which the men of Jamfara defeated the men of Kano. The men of Kano fled and deserted the Sarki, who was left with Nasan Kanni, Kashika Bugal, the Turaki Mania Allah Niki Mai, Berdi Kareria Yashika, and Dugara Gateri. They all lost their heads. Sharifa said to them, Does not a single one of you know the way back to Kano? They said, No. Nasan Kanni said, I know the way to the city. The Sarki said to him, Show me the road. So he showed the Sarki the road until they came to the Rimin Bogunswa. The Sarki entered the town and his house, and no one was allowed to see him, so great was his wrath. Nasan Kanni Bogal, Allah Nikin Maye, and Yishibke obtained great honor from the Sarki because of the fight at Yirgana. After this, the Sarki sent out Sarkin Gaya Jan Hazo and told him to put a wall round Gaya. Walls were built too at Tarke, Sukwa, Gano, Dawaki, and many other towns. When Bugal became Turaki Kuka, he sent messengers to Sarkin Yawuri to ask him for Algatas. The Sarkin Yawuri gave to him ten Algatas and three Kurakura. The messenger came with them to Turaki Bugal. Bugal kept them three months and sent them to the Maidaki Mariamma, since she was a great personage. There was no woman like her in the seven house estates. In Sharifa's time, Kauris first came to Hausaland. The Sarki was a mighty warrior. Among his captains were Sarkin Dawaki Sodi, Dan Iya Maji Kudu, Dan Iya Malam Shadu, Sarkin Jerume, Malam Bawa, Sarkin Jerume Ak Wuria, Dan Ia Dashina, Sarkin Jerume Ibrahim, Limanim Beridai Dodo, Beridai Ba Kudu, Sarkin Jerume Abdullah, Galadima Kofa Kani, these all fought under Dadi. There were also Maidawaki Magani, Dan Sudu Duraman, Ali Uban Dan Kurkuti, Yahaya Uban Dan Maji Baba, Sarkin Damargu Gabu, Sarkin Fulani Bebeji Abdua, Sarkin Fulani Danya, Sarkin Fulani Bugay Beris, Sarkin Gaya Alwali, Sarkin Fulani Sankara Dubai, Berda Alhaji, Madawakin Gawal Bajida, and others. When they went to war, they never ran away but always were victorious. Even though the Sarki were not present, Sharifa ruled Kana twenty-eight years and ten months. 38. Kumbari, son of Sharifa, 1143 to 1156, A.D. 1731 to 1743. The 38th Sarki was Mahama Kumbari, the son of Sharifa and Duki, he was a liberal Sarki, but quick to anger. His counselors liked him, but the common people hated him. In his time there was fierce war between Kano and Gobir. The name of Sarkin Gobir was Soba. If the Gobirawa defeated the Kanawa one day, the Kanawa defeated them the next. This state of affairs continued for a long time. 
in Kumbari's time, Sarakin Bornu Mayali came to Kano to war, and camped at Fagigi for three nights without a battle being fought, since Shehu Tahiru and Shehu Bundu prevented it. He returned to Bornu. Kumbari went to war with Dusi in the time of Sarkin Dusi Makuri, and very nearly entered the town through the fierceness of his attack. But his advisers prevented him entering the town, saying to him, Sarkin Kano, you have won the day, go home. He listened to their advice and went home. In the Dusi War, Sarkin Aljira Bugao was killed. Kumbari returned to Kano. In his time, shields were first brought from Nupe, which was then ruled over by Sarkin Nupe Jibrila. Guns were also brought. Mahama Kumbari was active in collecting jizya from the Kasua Kurumi, so that the market was nearly killed. The next year he collected jizya in Kano, and made even the Malams pay. There was so much disturbance that the Arabs left the town and went back to Katsina, and most of the poorer people in the town fled to the country. Turaki Kuka Tunku said to Kumbari, Saki, if you do not let this jizya alone, there will be no one left in the town but yourself and your servants. The Saki listened to him. Kudu Baldam. When he went out to Zanga, he was advised to make haste, for it was said, If you do not make haste, you will not conquer Baldam, because there are many warriors in the town. He said, I hear. When he came near the gate of the town, an arrow was launched at him, and a battle ensued between the Kanawa and Kudawa. When Kumbari saw that the battle was growing hot, he took a spear in his hand and attacked the wall of the town. The men of Kano followed him under a shower of arrows. The Kudawa slaughtered the Kanawa, and the Kanawa slaughtered the Kudawa, until Kumbari reached the gate of the town. Had not the gate been closed, he would have got in. The Kudawa ran away in a body to their houses. Kumbari camped at Zongon Dan in Gama. Afterwards, terms of peace were arranged and Kumbari returned to Kano. His captains were fifty-two men who knew no fear. Sarkin Jarumei Aidijaka, Berde Duguru, Dan Ia Tefiwa, Dan Ia Gajigi, Sarkin Majia Dandawa, Dan Tama Dan Arkaya, the Maji Yakufawa, called Kunkuru Dageza, Dan Berde Madakawi Yabo, Kaladima Dan Faramu, Sarkin Dawaki Malam Bawa, Berde Sakana, Sarkin Jerume Akalam, Jarume Tugwe, Dan Humuda, Dan Takari Hamadi, Dan Tara Tara Abbas, Sarkin Ganobako, Dandama Kanwa Chilaya, Makama Chikudu, Lifidi Sayadu, Dan Maskara, Maidawaki Berdi Dan Ashifu, Sadin Damargu Baji Dan Gaba, Sarakin Babeji Zakari, Dan Bugay Chusa, Dan Beras, Sarkin Ringim Ada, Alberka, Sarkin Tsekia Atoro, Dan Farzaki, Sarkin Burku Muni, Dan Samayila Chikewa, Jarumai Rayadu, Gashin Baki Tsofu, Makarma Dela, Dan Ajibiji Kakoshi Magani, Dan Shanono, Dan Ali Duka, and others. Each one of them had no fear in fight, but Kumbari thought there was no one equal to himself. He ruled thirteen years. 39. Al Haji Kabe, son of Kumbari, 1156 to 1166, AD 1743 to 1753. The thirty ninth Sarki was Al Haji Kabe. His mother's name was Zama. She was also called Zanabu. He was a Sarki of many wars and terrible. From the time he obtained the kingdom, he did not remain five months in his house without going to war or sending out his Sarkis to fight. Sarkin Gobir sent to try to make peace with him, but Kabe refused. He sent to Sarkin Gobir Babari, saying, 
I have a cap to fit anyone's head. Barbari said, I hear. The next year Barbari came to Kano to war. A battle ensued between him and Kabe at Dami. The Kanawa ran away because of the magic which Barbari possessed. The Kanawa left Kabe alone with the Dagarai and Quinkele, and Sarkin Dawaki Kinku Ami, and Turaki Kuka Yadoka. The whole army of the Gobirawa came charging up to the Sarkin Kano. The Quinkele withstood them until their chief was killed. Then Yakidoka said, Sarkin Kano, all the men of Kano have run away and left you alone with your slaves. Sarkin Kano returned to the town together with his slaves, some say with the Kanawa, sick at heart. The Gobirawa went on slaughtering the Kanawa, and the Kanawa slaughtered the Gobirawa in frequent wars until Kabe's death. No record can be kept of the fighting between them in Kabe's time, or the number of wars in which Kabe engaged, or which he ordered. No one gave presents to the Malams so much as Kabe did for he sought a reward in the next world. There was no man of his age who was so ruthless in killing men as Kabe. There was no peace in Kano, only trouble after trouble, what with the war with Gabir and other wars. Sarikin Dawaki Ali, Jarumai Tagwe Dan Bajida, Sarkin Jarumai Salihu, Lifidi Abubak, Berdi Bakana, Makama Baguinki, Lifidi Sawani, Ganda Faria, Magajin Kan Kama, Doro, Lifidi Jedi Kwama, Makama Al Majir, Galadima Guraguri, Galadima Jarmawa Ali, Beridik Kanda, Burdi Bakudu, Sarkin Damargu Buzu Dan Barji, Sarkin Ringim Quirudu, Burdi Shahu, and others were Kumbari's warriors and fought for Kabe. Kabe ruled nine years and seven months. 40. Yaji, son of Dadi. 1166 to 1182. AD 1753 to 1768. The 40th Sarki was Mahama Yaji, son of Dadi. His mother's name was Mariamma. He was a just and good Sarki, and a man of mild disposition. On account of this, his wives called him Malam Lafia. In his time there was no trouble. He ruled in harmony with his brothers, the sons of Bawu. There was no difficulty either with his Sarkis, or his chief slaves, or his household, or anyone. Many men came and settled in Kano land in his reign. He reigned fifteen years and ten months. 41. Baba Zaki, son of Yaji, 1182 to 1190, A.D. 1768 to 1776. The 41st Sarki was the son of Yaji, called Baba Zaki. His mother's name was Yerdona. He was an able Sarki of great strength, renowned for his memory and eloquence. He was called Baba Zaki. He made war on Birnin Aoyao, in the time of Sarki Abu Bakr, if he had not been, <coughs> if it had not been for Madawaki Kano Dandawa, Sarkin Gaya Gajigi, and Sarkin Jafun Furtumi, the Kanawa would have entered the city of Aoyo and destroyed the town. Yaji built a house at Takai and almost lived there but the court refused to live there. He made war on Burum Burum and took the town by assault, capturing many of the inhabitants and cutting the throats of some whilst the others fled. He curbed the power of the Sarkis and head slaves and plundered them every day. He forced them to give presents under compulsion and to go to war unwillingly. Hence he was called John Rano, well named the Disturber of Elephants. In war, he forced them to fight against their judgment. He was the first Sarki who had a guard of musketeers at Kano, a practice which has obtained ever since. He imitated the Arabs of Kano in almost everything. His war captains were five. 
Sarkin Sankaran Nagirki, Sarkin Bebeji Dembo, Sarkin Majia Kimfirmi, Makama Bubawa, Sarkin Jarumai Achukur, Sarkin Dawaki Maina. The great men in his time were forty two Dawaki Tukara, Bawa, Madawaki Dundurusu, Lifidi Gabjin, Galadi Manshamaki Alwali, Tunku Yakufu, Berka Wuta, Bagarami, Berka. These were all slaves. Among the Malams were Alkali Abbas, Alkali Makam, Limanim Kano Abu Ralph and his sons, Abu Bukr Dan Malam Bahari from Yandoto, and Husseini from Takai. The great men among the Arabs were Sharif Hassan, Hajariki, Sharif Hamad, Sharif Dahab, and others. Among the Sarki's sons were Dan Ia, Malam Osuman, Choka, Daka, and Nafata. Among his eunuchs were Sarkin Dawaki Muradi, Tudraki Mania Munaga Allah, Tudraki Kuka Kasan Allah, Tudraki Kuka Kan Nem Kiwo, Guninka Jefar, who was of the same people as Sharif Hassan, and others. The chief of those were Dan Maji Baba, Hangaza, and Dan Zanka Jibril. In all there were forty-two. Each of them thought he was greater than the rest in the Saki's eyes. Thus the Saki planned. Baba and Zaki ruled Kano eight years. 42. Dauda Abasama, son of Yaji, 1190 to 1195. A.D. 1776 to 1781. The forty-second Sarki was Dauda Abusama, the son of Yaji. His mother's name was Baywa. He was a Sarki of good character, reticent and wise, generous and popular. He was prudent and at the same time warlike, and kept his word. He had a mind above favoritism or revenge and took the Galadima Makama's advice in everything. The Galadima Makama was like a Sarki, while Dauda was like his wazir, because he was so forbearing. There was no war in his reign or rebellion. He ruled Kano five years and four months. 43. Mahama al-Wali, son of Yaji, 1195-1222. A.D. 1781 to 1807. The 43rd Sarki was Mahama al-Wali, son of Yaji. His mother's name was Bewa. As soon as he became Sarki, he collected stores of Gero and Dawa in case of war and famine. Nevertheless, famine overtook him. His chiefs said to him, Sarkin Kano, why do you refuse to give cattle to Dirki? The Sarki said, I cannot give you forty cattle for Dirgi. They said, What prevents you? If any Sarki in Kano does not allow us cattle for Dirgi, we fear that he will come to some ill. Alwali was very angry and sent young men to beat Dirgi with axes until that which was inside the skins came out. They found a beautiful Quran inside Dirgi. Alwali said, Is this Dirgi? They said, who does not know Dirki? Behold, here is Dirki. Dirki is nothing but the Quran. In Alwali's time, the Fulani conquered the seven house estates on the plea of reviving the Mohammedan religion. The Fulani attacked Alwali and drove him from Kano, whence he fled to Zaria. The men of Zaria said, Why have you left Kano? He said, the same cause which drove me out of Kana will probably drive you out of Zaria. He said, I saw the truth with my eyes. I left because I was afraid of my life, not to save my wives and property. The men of Zaria drove him out with curses. So he fled to Rana, but the Fulani followed him to Burum Burum and killed him there. He ruled Kano twenty-seven years three of which were spent in fighting the Fulani. 
44. Sulimanu, son of Abahama. 1222 to 1235. AD 1807 to 1819. The 44th Sarki was Sulimanu, son of Abahama, a Fulani. His mother's name was Adama Modi. When he became Sarkin Kano, the Fulani prevented him from entering the palace. He went into the house of Sarkin Dawaki's mother. One of the remaining Kanawa said to Sulimanu, If you do not enter the Gidan Rimfa, you will not really be the Sarki of city and country. When Sulimanu heard this, he called the chief Fulani, but they refused to answer his summons, and said, We will not come to you. You must come to us, though you be the Sarki. If you will come to Malam Jibrim's house, we will assemble there. Sulimanu went to Jibrim's house and called them there. When they had assembled, he asked them and said, why do you prevent me entering the Gidan Rimfa? Malam Jibrim said, If we enter the Habe's houses and we beget children, they will be like these Habe's and do like them. Sulimanu said nothing, but set off to Shehu Osuman Dan Hodio, asking to be allowed to enter the Gidan Rimfa. Shehu Dan Hodio gave him a sword and a knife, and gave him leave to enter the Gidan Rimfa telling him to kill all who opposed him. He entered the house and lived there. All the Kano towns submitted to him, except Faggam, which he attacked. He took many spoils there. On his way back to Kano, the chiefs of the Fulani said to him, If you leave Faggam alone, it will revolt. So he divided it into two and returned home. In his time, Dabo Dan Basso raised a revolt. He dared to look for a wife in Sokoto, and was given one. Sarkin Kano said, What do you mean by looking for a wife at Sokoto? So Dabo was caught and bound. His relations, the Danbazawa, however, came by night and cut his bonds and set him free. He ran to Sokoto, with Sulimanu following him. At Sokoto they both went before Dan Hodio. Dabo Danbazo said, I do not wish to marry your daughters, but I wish for a reconciliation between myself and your Sarki Sulimanu. So a reconciliation was made, and they returned to Kano. Sulimanu sent the Galadima Ibrahima to Zarya to make war. Ibrahima conquered Zarya and took many spoils. He returned to Kano. Sulimanu was angry because of the Galadima's success, and had sinister designs against him when he died himself, without having an opportunity of carrying them out. He ruled thirteen years. 45. Ibrahim Davo, son of Muhammadu, 1235 to 1262, A.D. 1819 to 1846. The 45th Sarki was the pious and learned Ibrahim Davo, son of Muhammadu, protector of the orphan and the poor, a mighty conqueror, a Fulani. His mother's name was Halimatu. When he became Sarki, he entered the Gidan Rimfa. Dabo made Sani Galadima. He, however, immediately tried to raise a revolt and incite all the towns to disaffection. The country Sarkis assembled and became Tawaii, from Ngogo to Damberta from Jirima to Sankar, and from Dusi to Biranin Kudu and Karayi. Dabo said, I will conquer them if Allah wills. He entered his house and remained there forty days praying to Allah for victory. Allah heard his prayers. He went out to hasten his preparations for war and made a camp on Dala Hill. Because of this, he got the name of the man who encamped on Dala. He spent many days on Dala and then returned home. He sent Sarkin Dawaki Manu Maituta to fight with Karai. When the Sarkin Dawaki reached Karai, he sacked the town and returned to Dabo. Dabo said, Praise be to God, and prepared himself to go out to war. He went to Jirima and sacked that town, and afterwards sacked Gasakoli and Jijita. 
Hence he was known as Davo, the Sacker of Towns. After he returned home, he kept on sending out men to raid towns. He went in person to attack Dan Tunku and found him at Yan Yahia. They fought. The Yerimawa ran away and deserted Dan Tunku, who fled to Damberta, and thence, with Dava following him, to Kazari. When the Saki reached the Karemma in pursuit, he stopped, turned round again, and went back to Damberta, where he wrecked Dan Tunku's house. Dabu then returned home. Dabu was celebrated in the song. The Sacker of Towns has come. Kano is your land, Bull Elephant Dabu, Sacker of Towns. When he went to war, the trumpets played. The Sacker of Towns is mounting. He made war on Birnin Sankara and Birnin Rano, took the town of Rano, and lived in the house of Sarkin Rano. After this exploit, he shaved his head. He never shaved his head, except he had sacked a town. When the Kano towns saw that Dava would not leave any town unconquered, they all submitted to him, and his power exceeded all other Sarkis. He had a friend whose name was Ango. When the Galadima Sani died, he made Ango Galadima, and as Galadima, the latter reached great power through his pleasant manner and his persuasiveness. In Dabo's time there was no foreign war, and people had food in plenty. Dabo conquered and spoiled Yasko. He had many war captains, a few among whom may be mentioned as Berdi, Kana Bugali, Sarkin Dawaki Manu, Sarkin Jerumai Dama, Sulimanu Gwekwarn Karifi, he it was who killed Tunari, the son of Sarkin Sankara, Juli Kuda, Lifidi, Maidawa Kingawa, and many others. These warriors of Dabo's time had no fear in war. When Dabo mounted to go to war, no such dust was ever seen, so many were his horses. The dust was like the Harmattan. Dabo was called Majeka Hazo. His was a wonderful and brilliant reign, but we will not say any more for fear of Balazi. He ruled Kano twenty-seven years and three months and nine days, his reign ending on the ninth of Safar. 46. Osumanu, son of Davo, 1262 to 1272, A.D. 1846 to 1855. The 46th Saki was Asumanu, son of Dabo. His mother was Shekara. The first act of his reign was to build a house for Shekara at Tafasa, with a big room, the like of which was never seen before. Shekara was called the mistress of the big room. Asumanu was a learned and good man, and generous. He was called the skin of cold water. The Galadima Abdullahi obtained in his time almost as much power as the Saki, while Osuman was like his Waziri. There was no war in his time except with Hadejia. He built a house at Gogil and had a farm there. In his time, Malams obtained great honor, among them Malam Ba Abseni and others. In Osumanu's time, Sarkin Dusi Bolo revolted. But the Sarki enticed him to Kano and deposed him. Highway robbers were very numerous because Osuman was so good-tempered and merciful. He could not bring himself to cut a man's hand off, nor, because he was so pitiful, could he cut a robber's throat. He was called Jatau Rabba Kaya. There was no Sarki like him for generosity. He ruled Kano nine years and ten months. 47. Abdullahi, son of Dabo, 1272 to 1300, A.D. 1855 to 1883. The 47th Sarki was Abdullahi, son of Dabo. His mother's name was Shikara. When he became Sarki, he set to work to kill all the robbers and cut off the hands of the thieves. He was called Abdu Sarkin Yenka because he was a strong-minded Sarki, ruthless and victorious. 
He was quick to depose chiefs, but kept his word to his friends. He never stayed long in one place, but went from town to town. In his time there was a very great famine, and the quarrel with Mbatu grew big from small beginnings. The Sarkin Kano was eager to make war upon Umbatu. His first move was to attack Kuluki. Dan Ia Lowal of Kano died at Kuluki, whereupon the Sarki returned home himself, but sent Abdullahi Sarkin Dawaki Dal Ladan and his son Tafida to war in Zaria country. They went to Zaria together. This was in the time of Sarkin Zaria Abdullahi Dan Hamada. When they returned from Zaria, it was not long before Dan Baskori made a descent upon Gwarzo. The Sarkin Kano sent Sarkin Dawaki on ahead and followed himself personally to meet Dan Baskori Sarkin Marari west of Gwarzo. A battle took place. The Kanoa ran away, deserting the Sarkin Dawaki Dan Ladar. Dan Baskori killed him. The Kanawa returned home in ones and twos. The Sakin Kana was very angry. He gave orders that a house was to be built at Nasarawa for him to live in during the hot season. He also built a house at Tarkay for the war with Umbatu. He had a house at Kefi in Bako, where he lived almost two years, because of Dan Maji, the neighbor of Umbatu. He fought with Warji after the war with Koluki and took enormous spoil. No one knows the amount of the spoil that was taken at a town called Seir. The corpses of Wadjawa, slaughtered round their camp, were about four hundred. The Sarki returned home. After a short time, the Sarki attacked Wadji again, and once more took many spoils. Kano was filled with slaves. Abdullahi went to Sokoto, leaving his son Yusufu at Tarkai. While he was there, Dan Maji came to attack Yusufu. A battle was fought at Dubaya. The Kanawa fled and deserted Yusufu. Many men were slain and captured. After this, Yusufu was made Galadima Kano and hence acquired much power. Abdullahi sent him to Dal from Tarkai to capture Haruna, the son of Dan Maji. Yusufu met Haruna at Jumbo, and a battle took place. The Umbatawa ran away, deserting Haruna. Yusufu killed and took many men. It is said that about seven hundred were killed. Afterwards, Yusufu tried to stir up rebellion, and was deprived of his office, and had to remain in chagrin and poverty till he was penniless. Abdullahi turned the Sarkin Dawaki Abdu out of his office, and with him, Makama Goda Damasu, Chiroma Diko, Dan Iya Alabira, Galadima Abdul Kadiri, and Galadima Yusufu. Abdullahi killed the Alkali Kano Ahmedu Rufayi and degraded Maaji Sulimanu, Maji Gajere, and San Kurumi Musa. He deprived Malam Dogo of his office of Waziri. The number of people he turned out of his office was countless. Hence the song, Son of Ibrahim, a pickaxe to physic hard ground. He sacked many towns. He made a new gate, the Kofan Fada. In his father's time it had been built up. He rebuilt the mosque and house of the Turaki mania early in his reign. They had been in ruins for many years. In his time Soran Giwa was built. At Warsaw, he met Dan Maji in war. It was towards evening when the battle was fought. Dan Maji retreated. If it had not been that the light failed, he would have been killed. Abdullahi attacked Betu, but failed. Abdullahi used to have guns fired off when he mounted his horse, till it became a custom. His chief men were Sarkin Yaki, called Malam Dogo, Malam Isyaka, Malam Garuba, Sarkin Gaya, Malam Abdu Badaneji, Al Haji Nufu, his friend Malam Masu, Tefida, his son, Shamaki Namu, Manasara, Jakara of Girko, and Dan Tabshi. 
Malam Ibrahim was his scribe, and was made Galadima. This man was afterwards turned out of office in the time of Muhammad Bello. Others were the Al-Kali Zengi and Al-Kali Sulimanu. Abdullahi went to Zaria and sat down at Athira, and then at Zunganaya. The Madawaki Ali of Zaria was in revolt against Sarkin Zaria. The Sarkin Kano made peace between them and returned home. In Abdullahi's time, Salimma Birka became great. In the time of Muhammad Bello, this man revolted and was degraded. In Abdullahi's time, too, the palace slaves became so great that they were like free men. They all rebelled in Muhammad Bello's time. But Allah helped Muhammad Bello to quell the rebellion. There were many great captains of war in Abdullahi's time, men without fear, so many of them that they could not be enumerated, but a few may be mentioned. Sarkin Yaki, Malam Dogo, and his son Duti, Jarumay Musa, Sarkin Bebeji Abu Bakr, Sarkin Ranu Ali, Sarkin Gesu Usuman, Sarkin Ajura Jibr. In this reign, Sarkin Damagaran Baba came as far as Jirima and sacked Garun Allah. Sarkin Gumil Abdul Jatol came to Pugalawa to attack it. Sarkin Maradi Dan Baskori came to Katsina. Abdullahi went to meet him. They met at Kusada, but did not fight. For this reason, the meeting was called Al Gish Bigish Zuru Yakin Zuru, for they looked at each other and went back. There was also a fight between Barafia Sarkin Maradi and Sarkin Kano at Bichi. Barafia ran away and Abdullahi took all the spoils. It is not known how many men were killed and slain. We do not know much of what Abdullahi did in the early part of his reign. He ruled Kano twenty-seven years and eight days and died at Karofi on his way to Sokoto. 48. Muhammad Bello, son of Ibrahim Dabo. 1300 to 1310, A.D. 1883 to 1892. The 48th Sarki was Muhammad Bello, son of Ibrahim Dabo. His mother was Shekhar. He was a very generous Sarki. He said to his friend Sarkin Fada Dan Gatuma, You are Waziri Kano. I place in your hands the management of Kano. The Sarkin father was unrivaled as a settler of disputes. Bello was like his wazir, and Sarkin father was like Sarki. When Sarki father died, Muhammad Bello stretched out his legs because he saw that now he must become Sarki in earnest. He expelled the Galadima Ibrahim from his office and banished him to Funkui in Zaria, whence his name Galadima na Funkui. Bello gave the post of Galadima to his son Tukh, and his son Zakari was made San Turaki. Another son, Abu Bakr, he made Chiroma in place of Chiroma Musa. This is the end.